Hey everybody, and welcome to this video where we're going to look at Noodle front-end hosting. So I'll start by telling you a story about why I'm making this video and why I'm promoting this particular product. Um, so in making Simple Ricks low-code hosting, I, um, I've been struggling with the, getting the back-end set up and getting the front-end set up separately in containers um, on a server. And the back-end was, was probably the hardest part, but in terms of technology, but the front end was tricky in terms of setup, just because you have to find a way to get the project files from a Noodle project into the cloud in a way that I can sort of pinch them from where they are and put them into an Nginx server or an Apache server or whatever. Um, and then do all the sort of magic that's required to reverse proxy that and make that your domain name can access that and et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to release the back end part first, and I thought I'll take care of the front end part later because it's not technologically difficult. It's more like user experience wise difficult because how can I convince you that it's a good idea to like you have to deploy and then you have to zip the project up and then you have to upload it somewhere and then I have to sort of mess around with it there was also the option of well could i make an online service that leverages noodles deploy function because in theory when you're deploying something um it is running a script on your computer to turn the noodle project files into um, a sort of react style project a special noodle style react project so um but that would have been incredibly difficult as well so all of these different things and then I'm thinking, okay, I just want to get the back end out there. Let's just get it out and and get people, you know, access to easy back ends because that's the part that's maybe the most annoying. Nobody wants to be setting up a, a back end in AWS App Runner and paying 10 euros a month for it or, or more when you don't realize you've been hacked or something and like your usage has spiked and you've been charged 10,000 bucks. That probably won't happen, but I'm just saying that's the AWS cliche. Um, and so I was thinking about getting it out really quickly. And I thought, I remember somebody mentioned, I think it was maybe Reggie or I can't remember who in the discord said, oh, at the moment I just use Vercel for the front end. And I just kind of brushed it off as one of those. Yeah. Another tool, yet another tool that's cloud based and it's going to take all your money. Um, and then I was, I was thinking yesterday, like, I really just want to get this out there. And I wanted to do the hosting. I thought I'm not going to do it in my own server. It's a pain. Let's go and check out this Vercel thing that I heard talked about. And it actually is absolutely magical how simple it is and how much it actually reminds me. And this is scary. It reminds me of when I used to deploy apps to live in bubble. It has that level of simplicity. So in, in doing that as a kind of an emergency solution, to just get the back end out there. I've discovered a tool that I think I might be using for most of my front end projects. And I wonder if it's even worth me doing a front end hosting thing for simple Rix hosting, because this is actually probably better than anything I could ever make. And it seems to be for very small, simple projects, it seems to be totally free. So I'm talking about sandbox hosting for your noodle app connected to a simple rig backend, of course. Um, but free in Vercel and it seems pretty fast. I mean, my simple rig website is running on there. If you've seen it, then, uh, it's, it's working pretty good. Um, so I want to, I want to take you through today and just do like, a. have just discovered it and I'm trying to pass on that knowledge to you guys to so you show you how you could deploy your project today in Vercel in, in like, not in two clicks, but like there's, there's a process to follow. I'm going to take you through it step by step. Um, I haven't got a guide today. I haven't got a a script, I'm just going off script, like in the good old days, and I'll show you um, how you can get your website published on Vercel. So get yourself a Vercel account for starters for free. It's the hobby plan, zero euros a month. Um, and I was going to talk about how, I, oh yeah, and you want to get yourself a Cloudflare domain because Cloudflare is great and offers all sorts of security and blah, blah, blah. And it, it, it does, and it's really nice to have this like complex DNS hosting environment. But actually, then I discovered you don't even need that because um, when you sign up for Vercel, one of the tabs is domains. You can actually buy a domain directly in Vercel. So they're going to then give you that domain as one to use like a uh, symbol Rick's awesome videos.com 
20 bucks. Cool. So you could buy that and have them be your domain registrar and use that then in your projects afterwards, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, so imagine you've gone on there, you've bought your domain for your dream project, or you've transferred it in, which you can do as well from here. Um, but otherwise, if you don't transfer it in, all you have to do when you set up a project in Vercel, a front-end project, is they'll give you a CNAME value. So CNAME is like when you're in your DNS settings of your domain registrar, whoever it is, GoDaddy or Namecheap or Cloudflare, you just have to go into the DNS and create the um, CNAME that points towards Vercel, and then it'll funnel all traffic to Vercel, and Vercel will handle it for you. And it seems like they even give you a free SSL certificate, so you'll be on HTTPS as well out of the gate which is pretty awesome. Um, and then how do you actually get your files in there? And this is the part that's really cool and that I hope if you if you follow along and you get used to doing things this way, then you're gonna be, um, you're gonna be um, using this in the same way that I would use Bubble back in the days to deploy projects to life, pretty quick and easy. Once you get used to it, which, you know, there's a process to follow. So um, let's just say we're going to add a new project. I'll, I'm not going to really add a new project, but I'll show you how it's done anyway. So we'll go add new project. What it's going to ask you to do is, uh, what I recommend you do is connect it to your GitHub or Git repository, right? So maybe you have Git whatever lab or something, but um, I mean, GitHub is pretty easy and free. So if you don't have a GitHub, which you may not have, a lot of people don't, don't worry, nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, then you want to you're going to want to get over to GitHub. I think actually, um, Carolina did a video, uh, wrote a video for me about this, how to set up a GitHub account. I don't think it's out yet, because I don't remember recording it. So that would be weird. But um, if you have seen that already, you probably have already set yourself up with a GitHub account. If not, set it up. It's free. Go into your repos, your repositories, and then go to new. This is going to be the deploy. This is going to be a repository in GitHub where you're going to deploy your your deployed files from Noodle to that repository. And then Vercel picks them up instantaneously, deploys it instantaneously, and you don't even have to touch anything else. So from your own, the comfort of your own computer, you tap a couple of commands and everything is deployed for you in the front end by Vercel for free. I'm still trying to work out what the catch is. I think it's that when you get to a certain level of traffic, then you start getting throttled and you might have to pay the 20 bucks a month. Oh my God, 20 bucks a month. But like, it's still pretty amazing um, compared to like AWS and all that stuff. I'm leaving AWS behind. I'm done with all that. I know it's been like, it's been a long month or two that I wondered about this, but yeah, I, I really don't think AWS is for me. So let's make a new repo, call it, you know, uh, deployed, um, simple Rick project or whatever. Um, and then once that's created, you can make it private as well. There's no problem. Keep it hidden. You don't want your deployed project files to be for, out there for everyone to see. So probably make it private. Don't create a readme or any of this stuff. Just leave it the way it is. It's just a repository to make the connection between your Noodle editor and Vercel's picking up the files and deploying them to the web, right? So just make it the, whatever name you want, private, and and build and make that repository when you've made it you'll see an empty repo or uh, what i have here which is uh, one that's got a bit filled in and there'll be a, a link here so this is the https link um this is the link that will tell your computer where to go where to send the files to okay so what's next uh oh yeah that even has a link well okay they've put the link in there uh, the Vercel guys cool uh, all right, so the next step is you've got your Noodle app and you want to send it to, no, you don't want to do that yet. Oh yeah, you do, you do. You want to send it first. So we're going to send it first to the GitHub repo so it's not empty when Vercel checks it the first time. So let's deploy that app. We're going to link it to the correct cloud service, whichever one you want the app to connect to in the cloud. It's really important. Pick your folder, deploy it to here, for example. I've got a folder with all my project files in there, cats and all that stuff. Uh, the obligatory cat logo. And uh, say, it's, say it's deployed now. So in Mac, similar thing on Windows, you're gonna go to your project folder. Um, nope. And 
on Mac, you have a handy little feature where you can right click a folder and go a new terminal at folder, otherwise just to CD and then whatever the directory of the folder is. Okay, so we're in, so we're at my Mac and then the folder we're in at the moment's simple Rix hosting v1. And now we will do, so the first thing we need to do is git in it. It's not going to work because I already have initialized this repository. And then um, once you've initialized that folder, it becomes a git folder. Uh, you do git, uh, what was it? Add, oh crap. I'm not very good at this stuff. Git add remote origin. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's this one. Isn't it? Yeah, git remote add, but I think origin needs to be in there as well. Hold on. Yeah, git remote add origin. There we go. So git remote add origin, and then you want to paste in, oops, that's uh, somebody's email address. Nice. You want to paste in uh, your GitHub address, the, the Git repo address, this one. So copy that, paste it into your terminal. That'll add the main branch of your um, Git repository to this folder and make it that it's connected to this folder. And then you're going to want to do git add. So this, so we've initialized it, we've connected it to GitHub. Now we do git add dot. It adds all of the project files that are in there to um, a commit. Then we do git commit dash m, and then we put in quotation marks, something like first commit, or if it's later, you can put in change the header text to something different, etc. Uh, and you should see all the files come up there and it'll say, you know, get to the git commit has, has been accepted. And then you do git push origin main. And git push origin main will push the things that you've just committed, which are the files in the project folder, to GitHub. And so then if you go back and refresh the page, then you'll find like in this, all of the files that you just saw locally on your computer are now inside GitHub. Then go back to Vercel, we did new project. It's going to ask you what you want to sync from. So you can click GitHub. And when you click GitHub, it's going to say, where do you want? Do you want it to sync all your repositories or just a certain one? I would personally, I mean, you might have a GitHub that's already connected to things. Um, I would just go to your private one, configure, and then I did only select repositories. And then I selected the specific repository that I wanted to include and you can select multiple ones you know if you have a new project in the future just do what i just did adjust permissions and then add a new repository to it in the future but it means that Purcell will be allowed to access this repository the one that i've just committed to and pushed to um, so once that's done then you'll see the repository there you click import and then fill out basically nothing just your project name can just be left the way it is Framework preset, leave it as other. Root directory, leave it alone. All of this stuff, environment variables, build and output settings, leave it alone. And then click deploy. And then that's pretty much it. I think you maybe you choose a, a domain name afterwards. Yeah, there's something about choosing a custom domain name. Where is it? Oops. And... So maybe domains. Yeah, yeah. So here's where you add one of the, your domains, and it will tell you here if you need to add any specific DNS settings, um, which you know gives you a guide on how to do it. Learn more, so you can just read the guide. Or if you've purchased the domain through Vercel, it'll just show up here, and you can just assign that to this project. Um, and then that's it. Once this all says assigned and whatever, go and access it, and you'll see that what you've just deployed has um, is now live. Okay, so that's all well and good. It seems a little bit complicated, but you know, what's the big deal? Um, why shouldn't I just do it with some other hosting thing? Well, because the next time you want to deploy, what I do, this is my, my way of doing things, so you know, don't take this as the Bible. Uh, I go into, no, documents. So I go into the folder where I deployed before. Say I've just changed, like today I changed the, the header because it said noodle hosting and I wanted to say low code hosting. So delete everything that's in here. I know that sounds scary, but it's all in GitHub. It's all saved. It's in some bunker in Antarctica somewhere safe forever. So don't worry about it. Delete everything that's in here. 
in the spirit of deploying fresh with the same backend, picking the folder, this will now be empty, deploy to it again, it's v2, then you've just deployed version two, go back into your terminal, wherever, it, where did it go? And then once again, go back to the, the folder where you just pushed the files to, and then just repeat the same process again. If you were, this is your day to day now, this is just your publishing to live, like bubble style. You just do git add plus, git commit m changed the header text, and then git um, push origin main. As soon as you hit enter, go and have a look <laughs> at the website because Vercel will already have pushed it to life because it's got this, um, it's got the connection to your to your GitHub project. And so it, as soon as it detects that there's been a new push, it'll update the files that it has, um, or it'll, you know, whatever, push the files from GitHub to um, the web or however they do it, whatever the witchcraft is behind Vercel, um, it's instantly published. So today it was my first time ever since Noodle um, started taking down all the sandbox hosting and paid hosting. It was the first time ever that I thought that was actually really easy. I can actually just deploy new versions of my project, do a couple of Git commands locally, sip a cup of tea, and then everything is uh, already deployed live. So I was genuinely chuffed, genuinely happy about that. Um, and looking through their pricing and trying to find the catch, but it seems like for one project with small, a small amount of traffic, it's free forever. So um, really blown away by it. I'm sure there's tons of stuff to discover, cron jobs and all this stuff. It's probably where the paid part comes in, but just to have something deployed, HTTPS, your own domain name, using Simple Rick's backend, also HTTPS, and so it's all, all gravy, then uh, you can actually have your sandbox project deployed um, and really easily updated using that uh, the Git process that I just showed you. So I really think this is, for this moment in time, 25th of March, 2024, this is my favorite way to publish Noodle projects. And I do have a feeling that I would do this even for serious projects. So um, I would definitely look into it if I were you, try to follow along. And um, if you like it, then basically with my hosting backend and this first cell front end, you've got everything you need for your noodle journey. So um, if you have any questions, don't forget to hit me up in Discord. I'm in the noodle server and or just send me an email. Uh, you'll find my address somewhere and uh, look forward to hearing from you and hope that this was useful. See you later.